Welcome to an interactive graphing activity, a presentation prepared for the 2014 AEA Committee on Economic Education poster session in Philadelphia. As instructors, we know that student engagement is the key to improving learning outcomes, but it's easy to lose sight of this truth in an age of abundant technology. Using technology can help students learn, but it's important to use technology in a way that supports student engagement. For example, while few would call the traditional chalk and talk approach highly interactive, simply using PowerPoint to deliver the same content is even less effective. As one instructor observed about his experience in a macro principles course, handing out PowerPoint slides makes at least some students less engaged with the lecture. In particular, students who rely solely on the provided slides will miss the minimal but potentially valuable practice constructing graphs that traditional note-taking allows, even if the instructor takes care to explain the process of constructing graphs step by step. How can we use technology more effectively? And how can we promote active learning in online only and blended courses? Learning to understand, manipulate, and apply graphical models is a key outcome of most principal's courses. By adding interactive web-based exercises, we can potentially improve on both the chalk and talk and PowerPoint and talk approaches. One option for adding graphing exercises is a service like Applia, Sapling, or MyEconLab. While these tools have come a long way, they're inherently more constrained than an exercise that asks students to construct a graph from scratch. This is especially important for learning to translate between real-world problems and a model. Nor are prepackaged solutions ideally suited for use with every textbook. The terminology or sequence of topics may not match those used by the instructor's preferred text, confusing students. Commercial solutions are also less plentiful for intermediate level coursework. Finally, students have budget, budget constraints. Of course, prepackaged solutions do have an upside. The work of creating the exercises has already been done, and the exercises are typically graded by a computer. But the right tool can minimize the work involved in creating exercises. Ideally, the same tool used to create the exercises could be used to create graphs for slides, exam questions, and ad hoc answers to student questions and elements of one exercise could be recycled for use in another. The Google Drive drawing tool used in our current solution satisfies these criteria. On the downside, using an external tool means more work integrating with the existing learning management system, but this also means less lock-in to the LMS solution. Meanwhile, student self-evaluation and interaction with peers is not just a substitute for traditional grading, it's integral to the learning process. An earlier version of this activity used the web-based drawing tool sumopaint.com to create graphs and the online bulletin board wikispaces.com to submit student work. While effective and free, the solution did require some coordination to distribute the exercises and for students to post work under a name that matched the course roster. Students also had to learn to use two new sites and not all browsers were supported equally well by the external tools. For the new version of the activity we deployed in 2013, we used Google Drive's drawing tool to create and distribute the exercises, as well as to create student responses. Students then submitted and evaluated their work within Husky CT, UConn's Blackboard-based learning management system. In summer 2011, UConn began a migration of student email accounts to Google Apps for Education, and the transition was completed by the end of 2012. Thus. All our students already have a Google account that corresponds to their UConn email address and which includes a Google Drive account with 30 gigabytes of full free storage for their documents. This eliminated the need to create a new account for each student and simplified the process of distributing the exercises. In addition, students are already comfortable with the Google environment and the web-based component of Drive is consistent across all major browsers and operating systems. Furthermore, although student responses to the exercises could be shared within Drive itself, drawings also can be exported to standard graphic file formats. 
This makes it straightforward for students to post their answers to a forum within our learning management system. Of course, exported files could also be used to post answers to Wikispaces or another online forum. Although the drawing tool is relatively easy to use, we did use the free Jing software from TechSmith to create a short video tutorial introducing students to the features needed to complete the first assignment. Few students required further assistance, and some of those who did were able to rely on their peers. We also created a video that showed students how to post their answers to the learning management system. Here's an outline of the steps involved in creating and completing the graphing exercise. First, of course, the instructor creates the exercise using the drawing tool in Drive, and the instructor then shares the exercise with read-only permissions with the students within Drive. The instructor then posts the link to the document to the uh, learning management system, in our case Blackboard, and students are then able to copy the document in Drive. Since it's shared read-only, of course, they can't overwrite the original, but they can make a copy and modify it. That's the next step. The students modify the copy in Drive to create their answer. They export the answer to a standard graphic file, such as PNG or JPEG, and then students upload that graphic to the forum in the learning management system. And the last step, perhaps the most important, is that students compare their answers to other students' answers, attempting to arrive at the best answer collectively, and then compare their answers to a model answer from the instructor after the due date for the exercise. While we haven't yet analyzed the impact of the graphing activity on students' grades, we did survey the students in the fall 2013 iteration of our Principles of Microeconomics course. Some students pointed to the visual or hands-on aspect of the activities as the most beneficial aspect. For example, telling us visualizing the charts helped me remember things or being able to graph things on my own helped me more than if I just had to look at someone else's graph. Others cited specific concepts that were clearer after completing the graphing activities. For example, one student told us the graphing activity helped me to understand marginal cost and marginal revenue. Asked about the most difficult aspect of the activity, some students reported no difficulty at all. Other students did express frustration with the mechanics of the activity or with the activity as a whole. Clearly, making the activity clear, accessible, and useful for all students can be a challenge. But many students pointed to the required explanations of the graphs as the most challenging aspect of the activity. This suggests that the activity may have achieved our goal, getting students not only to manipulate the graphs, but to grapple with their meaning. Thanks for taking the time to view our presentation. At the URL on your screen, you will find additional material, including a copy of the tutorial video we created to demonstrate the use of the drawing tool. We'd love to hear more about your experiences creating interactive graphing exercises for your students.